just not comfortable with this merger idea. Well, why not? I just don't think the economy's right for it. Oh, you're not taking into consideration the third quarter projections. I mean, if you think about that, the trend corporate big wigs will, will not be seen tonight, so that we happen. can bring you the sure following episode of happen. Almost Live. <laughs> Tracy Conway, Bob Nelson, Bill Stanton, Nancy Guppy, Steve Wilson, and Ed Wyatt, and starring John Keister. And we thought it might be fun to talk to one of the behind-the-scenes folks here on the show. Lonnie is one of our staffers. Yeah. What do you do, Lonnie? What's that supposed to mean? I was just wondering. You think I don't do anything around here, don't you? No, I didn't Well, I'll tell that. you, I do a lot more than you do, Mr. Prima Donna announcer boy dork face. Okay. Yeah. What do you like most about working on the show, Lonnie? The people. Mm -hmm. I like working with people. Thanks. Uh -huh. And now, here he is. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, not a fun week for the Huskies, folks. Ooh, not a fun week. They had their problems on the field today. And uh, it was also discovered this week that quarterback Billy Joe Hobart had some trouble of his own. You probably read about that. Let me see if I got this straight. He used connections to get a big loan that he couldn't repay, then used the money to buy cars, guns, golf clubs, and wild weekends. Well. Sounds to me like he just wanted to know what it was like to be a Republican while there was still a little time left. But I don't know. The last yuppie, the very last yuppie. <laughs> Billy Joe Hobart had the last 80s experience that anyone will have. It's over now. He got in under the wire there. Yeah, the Huskies, they dropped in the polls. So did the Republicans. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, yes, a lot of them dropped out of their jobs, which they were particularly mad about since the economy is so bad right now. Yeah, uh, our own, our own ex-governor, uh, by the way, uh, you know, he left on his own accord, but he says he wants to be ambassador to Japan now. You might have seen that. Booth wants to be the ambassador to Japan. Although if that's not possible, he's already lined up a job as singing coach for Mariah Carey, just to fall back on it, <laughs> which is good. That's good. You might be wondering what some of the other losing politicians are going to be doing. At least we thought you might be so. We, th we made a few calls and compiled this list. For example, Dan Quayle is going to write an autobiographical pop-up book. <laughs> George, George Bush is going to take over for Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Right there. Ross Perot is going to investigate the 82 million people who didn't vote for him. <laughs> James Stockdale is not yet aware the election is over, so we don't know. Ken Eikenberry, get drunk, shoot squirrels. <laughs> and finally, Rod Chandler will become rap star MC Cottonhead and run in 96 with the slogan, One Bad Mother in Tennis Shoes. Which I think will help. I think that'll help out. Yep, a lot of people lost jobs this week. Those big transitions, lots of things like that can be traumatic times in a person's life, those big transitions. So we're pleased to announce that we've lined up a new sponsor who's trying in their own way to help out in times like that. Oh, why don't you shut up? Oh, shut up! Here's the Get out of here! I'm going! I'm going! I'm going! I'm going! I'm going! I am going forever! I'm gone! You've just walked out of a horrible, destructive marriage. Now what? Booze? Drugs? A series of meaningless one-night stands? <laughs> yes! But first, come on down to the Just Divorced Gym, where the trainers know the needs of just divorced men. Come on, Bob. When she sees you, she's gonna be sorry she ever let you go. Her loss, man. Five, six, seven. 77, 78, 79. And just divorced women. 
You are the correct weight for a real woman, not like the tooth thick with hair he left you for? Damn right. You'll never amount to anything. Work out to motivational tapes with the voice of your ex-wife. I can't even believe I even thought of marrying you in the first place. You are so stupid. You know how stupid you really are? Everybody knows you're stupid. Nobody even likes you. I hate your guts. And work it out with women's rage aerobics. <laughs> this you can throw towels on the floor and nobody's gonna bitch at you <laughs> plus our patented digitan system will erase the last trace of your memory <laughs> the just divorced jim because getting buff is the best revenge what do you think now dolores And now, famous composer or type of noodle, Puccini, Rotini, Verdi, Mastaccioli. Badass jeans, because everything evolves, especially your butt. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now that we're into November, we're starting to see all those Christmas toy commercials. And, you know, it occurred to me that one toy that never goes away is the Barbie doll. You know, Barbie dolls were the only girl toys that I liked as a kid, not for the obvious reasons that I might be attracted to them, but it's because Barbie had such cool stuff. She was the original yuppie. She taught a generation about conspicuous consumption, and we learned very well. I went by a toy store yesterday to see if Barbie was still at it, and I wasn't disappointed. Although, she's a little more politically correct these days, if you'll notice. For example, this is animal-loving Barbie. Uh, obviously ready for a trek in the jungle, this uh, gold, gold lame outfit here should keep the malaria away. And look, she's got her own panda under her arm. Well, that's, that's, that's great. She's taken a rare animal out of a tree. I, I guess the next, uh, the next edition will be Chinese prison Barbie. Well, Ken, I know you're wondering about Ken. Ken is still around. And even when I was a kid, I knew Ken was just a lame, pretty boy. And any self-respecting kid used to have G.I. Joe come in and kick Ken's ass. <laughs> yeah. uh, this uh, particular one looks like figure skating Ken or, I don't know, Vegas lounge act Ken. But you can see here it's called My First Ken. But I'm guessing it was Midge's sixth or seventh can. <laughs> Midge, as you may remember, is Barbie's less attractive friend. Uh, she was made so Ken could come up to her and say, Hey, who's your friend? 
And Midge is also always Barbie's designated driver. And this is, uh, this is what Barbie drives. Barbie drives the Barbie Ferrari or the Barbie Porsche 911 Cabriolet. <laughs> now, does she really need this? Do you think kids would have minded if she had a LeBaron? Oh, no, Barbie wouldn't be caught dead in an American car. No, no. And who do you think bought it for her? Probably the 45-year-old midlife crisis Ken. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, actually, maybe, maybe Barbie bought it herself, because Barbie has a job now. She's in a band, you see? Barbie live in concert, see? She's got two black backup singers who are probably doing the lead vocals and not getting any credit on the album. <laughs> One thing's for sure, though, they've got to be better than Wilson Phillips. Uh. Ken, you might be interested to know, Ken is a musician, too. Look, it's rapping Ken. Now, that's the real hardcore voice of the ghetto, isn't it? His album's called Straight Out of Newport Beach. Look at this, it actually, it actually does make a noise if you... Hear this thing? Sounds kind of like the almost live theme, but not as commercial. <laughs> All right, well, here is the ultimate. Barbie for president. Well, <laughs> why not? Why not? <laughs> you know, uh, what do you think? Ken for vice president? I think we already tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm guessing this Ken might make a good first lady, though, so we'll keep them together. <laughs> keep buying those Barbies, and we'll be back right after this. Amplification for Almost Live, provided by American Music. And now, Reagan cabinet member, or Oregon town, Milton Freewater. Malcolm Baldridge. Milton Friedman. John Day. They're the people who really run this country. Hey, you guys, I got this great accounts receivable joke. See, there's a second. You work with them every day. Great memo, Mr. Deppa. And now, they're the hit of the TV season. Oh, there you are. Yeah, look, we need to take a meeting. Yeah, maybe after break. Oh, I'm getting another call. Can you hold? Yeah. They're the ineffectual middle management suck up. <laughs> And so, after analyzing the trends through our computer database, it's become clear that over a three-month period, we have eaten Chinese a full 5% more than Italian for lunch. Very good, Nancy. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. All right, so, uh, Italian for lunch? Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Italian it is. Now, wait a minute. Now, what's, what's happened to the phone? I cut the wires. Now, everybody stay calm. I've got a little statement I need to read. Oh, good. The phone repairman, because we've been having a lot of problems. With problems. I'm not the telephone repairman. I'm a pro-environmental terrorist. And I'm holding you all hostage until your company agrees to quit destroying the earth with oil spills and chemicals and clear-cutting. Hold it, hold it. Oil spills, clear-cutting? I thought we were in real estate. I thought we built airplanes. I thought we made gum. <laughs> All right, now, there is the problem right there. You people own so many things, you don't even know what you're doing. Do you know if we happen to own the football team? Because Sunday's game is sold out, but if we owned it, we could get tickets maybe all around. Yeah, that'd be great. We'd have it together. Listen, I don't know who you think you're fooling with the dumb act. <laughs> but hey, if I don't get some action on this stuff right away, there's going to be some trouble around here, let me tell you. Okay, look, if you have a complaint, that should be channeled through marketing. 
No, that goes through the public relations department now that Bob Richardson heads it up. Oh, that's right. And by the way, have you seen Richardson lately? The guy looks great. He's hitting that Stairmaster, which is what I have to do. <laughs> hey, you know what helps is eating lighter, like just salad for lunch. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just have a salad today. Would you people, would you people shut up, please? I think he's saying he wants us to stay on task. <laughs> no, what I am saying is what I want from you is a public statement that says you will stop raping the earth for profit. Okay, now I think I have to interrupt you there. Uh, Stan. Stan, I, you bring up a very good point, but I think you'd be very surprised to learn just how many actions we're taking in that direction right now. As a matter of fact, uh, that's a good point for brainstorming. Let's think of what, what are some of the, uh, the actions that we have already taken on this, uh, in this direction. Yes. Uh, no air conditioning in our suite at the Cancun retreat. That's right. We had no air conditioning in Cancun. That's very Oh, we're good. using recycled paper for the memos. Recycled paper for the memos. Now, that's going to save at least a million pieces of paper every week just from the people oh, in this room. Oh, okay, alone. now I'm Kicked. Now I want to see some action right now. When you say right now, does that mean next Tuesday would be okay? You know, I am sure we could get an action plan together by then. Don't you? Uh, can't do it Tuesday. I've got a crisis management seminar. <laughs> Wednesday's no good for me. It's my power walking day. Uh, you know, we won't have this room again until next Thursday anyway, and uh, he does have the comfy chairs. Oh, we no, we got to keep the chairs. That's really important. In the morning, I have a two o'clock. All right, Thursday morning looks good for me. How is it for everybody else? All right, Thursday morning it is. That's set. Where is Stan? <laughs> Next week on the ineffectual middle management suck up. See, so it turned out that Stan the terrorist only grazed himself. Mm, yes, he could use more assault rifle training. Yeah, well, he seems like a nice guy, so it should be fun working with him. What do you mean? Oh, well, the head of personnel found him wounded in the hallway, thought he showed a lot of initiative, so he's just joined the management trainee program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's for lunch? I am. Hey, let's go see if Stan wants to come. Yeah. Good idea. What a good idea. Oh, Welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. Tuesday's four-car accident on Aurora Avenue has been linked to the election. It seems that overly excited campaigners who hope to gain last-minute support for their candidates wave signs, threw rocks, and shot out windshields and tires. <laughs> A recent archaeological discovery proves that ancient people drank beer as many as 5,000 years ago. Scientists say the key finding was an ancient skiing poster featuring the Neanderthal bikini team. <laughs> In recent weeks, Seattle area gangs have been ripping off businesses by using near-perfect counterfeit credit cards. Police say the only flaw in the fake cards is that under the expiration date, it says, when we're done stealing all the crap we want. <laughs> There, I'm okay. A study shows that in the year 2020, traffic in the Seattle area sh could increase by 78%. The same study said that in the year 2525 was a stupid song that went on way too long. <laughs> the Seattle Sonics opened their season on Friday with two games in Japan. When asked why they decided to open their season in Japan, coach George Carl replied, they're short, I think we can beat them. <laughs> The King County Library has received 30 requests so far for Madonna's sex book. All but four of them came from Reese Lindquist. <laughs> a, personal skills work a personal skills workshop called Tools for Change will be held in Bellevue next week. Workshop counselors hope things go smoother than last year when several Monroe residents showed up looking for cheap hammers and drills. <laughs> wow. Wine Spectator magazine says Eastern Washington is the nation's hottest wine region. A similar honor was given to the Pioneer Square District by the editors of Fortified Wine <laughs> Spectator. Finally, Booth Gardner says he wants to be named ambassador to Japan when his term of, as governor is over. When asked why he chose Japan, Gardner replied, they're short, I think I can beat them. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you. We'll be right back.
And now, gum disease or Lithuanian basketball star, curtainitis, periodontitis, marshallonis, gingivitis. And now, the lame list, or what's we this week? Brought to you by America's heavy metal community. Lame! Bed frames that squeak! Lame! Man, that's so lame! The $10 service charge for writing bad checks! Incredibly lame. Lame. Mark Antony's use of verbal irony during the funeral speech in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar! guy who says it's the right thing to do patty murray's haircut wallows in lameness this has been the lame list well that's it for tonight join us next week when we have another visit with billy kwan and uncle fran's musical forest so we'll see you then that's next week folks bye bye Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza.